everyone. I'm April Cummings in for Donna Bush. Thank you for joining us for your CIG television news brief. The Royal Cayman Islands Police Service is more than halfway through the national gun amnesty, which began on the 1st of July. To date, one firearm has been surrendered during the amnesty, as well as a significant amount of ammunition. The RCIPS continues to encourage the community to take advantage of the amnesty by turning in all illegal guns, gun components, and ammunition throughout the month of July. Without fear of prosecution, no questions asked. Four options have been provided to the public in order to surrender guns, ammunition, and any other weapons, including drop-off, pick-up via a trusted party, or via Crime Stoppers. You can find out more about how to hand in firearms on the Rural Cayman Islands Police Service website at rcips.ky. You can also call 936-8026 to make arrangements for handing in guns, ammunition, and other weapons. Visit police on their social media pages at RCIPS Cayman on Instagram, Royal Cayman Islands Police Service on Facebook and at Policing Cayman on X for frequent updates on the national gun amnesty. Please play your part to ensure our communities are free from gun and violent crimes. Say no to guns, say no to violence, and make the Cayman Islands safer. The Cayman Islands art community suffered the loss of founding father and Caymanian contemporary art, Bendel Hides, in June 2024. The National Gallery of the Cayman Islands held an event this weekend to honor Mr. Hides and his work. Cultural stalwarts, friends and family members filled the Harkwell Theater to share fond memories of Mr. Hides. A lot of things that we miss as spectators that artists see and we are willing to deal as artists with that great contradiction that exists, that they see you not where you see yourself, True. but they see you where they want to put you. To learn more about Bendel Hides and his creative career, visit nationalgallery.org.ky. That is nationalgallery.org.ky. Parliamentarians continued their business today, Tuesday, July 23rd, for the second sitting of the fourth meeting of the 2023-2024 session. Eight reports were tabled during the sitting, including the 2022 Health Insurance Commission report, which was presented by the Minister for Health and Wellness, the Honorable Sabrina Turner, who shared details of the progress made by the Commission. Mr. Speaker, during 2022, there were six external outputs that were successfully delivered on behalf of the Health Insurance Commission. They are as follows. The Health Insurance Complaint Regulations, Administration of the Segregated Insurance Fund and the Number of Insured Persons, Public Education Campaign Focused on Health Insurance, Enforcement of Health Insurance Legislation, Provision of the Policy Advice and Reports to the Health Insurance Commission and the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and on-site inspections. Accordingly, Mr. Speaker, in 2022, the Health Insurance Commission handled 4,581 inquiries, which included policy terminations, high-risk applications, individual reports, complaints, and applications related to the Premium Payment Assistance Program. Of that number, approximately 58 percent, meaning 2,672 inquiries, were either resolved or closed. There was a solemn addition to the day's order paper, a tribute to the late former Deputy Governor, Mr. Donovan Ebanks, with MPs sharing their fond memories of Mr. Ebanks from the Parliament floor. Honorable members, on Sunday, the 2nd of June, 2024, the late Mr. Donovan Ebanks, MBE, JP, former Deputy Governor of these islands, was called to higher service at the age of 72. As Deputy Governor, he was an ex officio member of this parliament. Mr. Ebanks left deep footprints on the sands of time in these islands. He was an exemplary civil servant who served his beloved country for more than 37 years, beginning in 1975 as an engineer at Public Works and rising through the ranks to become Deputy Chief Secretary in 1994. Chief Secretary in 2009, and following the enactment of the 2009 Constitution in November 2009, the first Deputy Governor and Head of the Civil Service. Over the years, Donnie, as most of us called him, played pivotal roles in the development of many key policies and government agencies and in the improvement of governance generally. 
His work over the decades in the establishment of the National Hurricane Committee and its successor, Hazard Management Cayman Islands, is but just one of countless examples of his vision and leadership acumen. This parliament accorded him the honor of a lying in state on June 21st, as a way of both recognizing his lifetime of public service and offering our respect for his steadfast leadership. The government then went to committee to discuss the bills presented for the current meeting, including continued debate on the Firearms Amendment Bill. We will share results of the bills passed in tomorrow's newscast. If you want to watch parliamentary proceedings, you can do that on demand on the Cayman Islands Government YouTube channel. And now on to the day's weather. We're expecting light to moderate easterly winds and seas for the next 24 hours in association with a slack pressure gradient over the northwest Caribbean. A surface trough over Jamaica is expected to move over the Cayman area this afternoon, bringing an increased chance of showers. Radar images are showing some isolated showers in and around the Cayman area moving towards the southeast. Tonight, we are expecting partly cloudy skies, 30% chance of rain, temperatures falling to the upper 70s, with winds coming from the east at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights of 2 to 4 feet. Remember to check out the Cayman Islands National Weather Service's Facebook and website for your look at the latest weather conditions. And before we end today's news, if you're watching us on YouTube, we ask that you take a moment to like, share, and subscribe for the most accurate Cayman Islands government news. I'm April Cummings in for Ms. Donna Bush, wishing everyone a great evening.